Coleman Alderson for GardensAll.com. I'm out here in the garden and we are looking at our mountain mint as it is grown. This is the narrow leafed variety and it is a wonderful plant to have in your garden for numerous reasons. Mainly it's a pollinator that attracts all kinds of pollinators. That was one reason we picked it and then we discovered how tasty a tea is when it's made out of these leaves. It really is a powerful taste and uh, just lovely. So it is time now before it blooms to take some of this out. We wouldn't want all of it out. We don't want to leave, uh, take out all the all of the plant and leave no flowers for the pollinators. It has grown up. It's about waist high here. And what I'm looking at doing, because it's so woody, ordinarily you could use shears and they may work okay, but I like using these head shears. I'm not taking it off the whole entire plant. We want to have more flowers come up later in the season. So about a third of the plant is coming off. And in one fell swoop, we can get a handful. About like that. And then we'll take this and we'll show you how we strip the leaves in a very efficient manner. Hi, this is Leora Alderson with GardensAll.com. Coleman was just showing you um, pruning the uh, mountain mint as it was uh, in order to harvest it for tea and to get it, some of it harvested before the blossoms, uh, but leaving enough for the flowers for the pollinators. Um, and we found on YouTube, and we'll try and link to the original video, a really clever technique for stripping the mountain mint or herbs, any herbs basically, of the leaves. And it is through, by pulling them through a hole in the colander. And it just captures most of it, just like that. And if you miss something, then you can just toss it in. Now, it didn't go so well, fit so well in our regular holes. And so Coleman drilled some other holes um, on the upper rim that are a little bit bigger. And so we'll try to fill those out right here. Those are useful for the larger stems. Works yeah, pretty smaller good. stems, you could, like oregano and thyme, you could definitely use the smaller ones. And it has this cool effect of creating this like floral arrangement. We've got a number of uh, prunings here from earlier. So as we speed along through this segment, there are other items that can be used to strip leaves, like a food grater or even a steamer, as long as it has sizable holes in it. We like the colander because as you strip the leaves off, the leaves land inside the bowl and they're ready to go. Pull them down into the bottom and repeat the process, right? And what about rinsing? So um, for this, we are gonna show, a lot of times we don't, especially with mints. We have really never seen any kind of insect or bugs on mints and they're out in the sun, sort of getting sterilized throughout the day. But just for the sake, since most people recommend washing it, and we're going to go ahead and rinse that. And then we're going to put it in a spinner, salad spinner, strainer. This is where you have a chance, like some of the debris, some of the um, vegetation got kind of pulped from the process, so we would omit that. So that's a good reason to put it in the um, rinsing water is that you can, it helps you pick through some of those spots, or you can pick through those before you do anything else with it. So it's pretty wet right now, so I'm just gonna pick out a little bit more of the debris and then spin it. The spinner is like 35 years old, so <laughs> it doesn't look pretty, but it still serves. them ready to start lining up on the dehydrator and they don't have to be it really doesn't matter if they're overlapping a little bit here and there because they will dry out very quickly in the dehydrator so with these lighter leaves and things you don't need to worry as much about that I'm not going to worry too much about the stems either because once it's dry it'll be easy to separate those out from the mix so just to make it a quicker process 
besides the stems still have some flavor. So, you know, it's not that bad if they end up in your tea mix, if it's just for you, maybe not if it's for uh, gifts for somebody, but because it doesn't look as pretty, but they do have nutritional value and flavor as well. You just don't want the, um, yeah, there you go. Want any of the rotten pieces in or pulpy pieces. Okay, so that's one full tray and it was not a full bowl almost one full tray. And then we basically got five to fill up on our Nesco dehydrator at one time. Um, and we'll be drying these overnight and they will probably be done in about 12 to 24 hours. And then once that's done, what do we do? Oh, right. Well, so we, we have so far primarily used it for tea. Use it some for cooking and seasoning, but primarily for herbal tea and either by itself or in all kinds of other blends, cold or hot. And it's delicious, it's amazing. All right. Well, thank you very much. This is Leora Alderson and Coleman Alderson for GardensAll.com. Bye. Thanks for visiting. Mm -hmm.